Hey gang, Scott here. Luminar Neo. This is a tool that I don't talk about very often on YouTube, uh, although I do use it. It is part of my workflow. I use it a lot as a finishing tool for work I've done uh, in other packages. I use Luminar Neo as a plugin. And the very recent update in early November 2025, they added a light depth tool. Well, I should say they replaced Relight AI with light depth. Basically gave it some uh, some better smarts. And I think the, the the way that they've approached what is effectively depth masks for dealing with light, you know, warmth and, and brightness and all those things, it's very intuitive. It's a, it's a really, you know, the, the engineers there, the UI designers, whoever did this, they did a really nice job on it. Uh, I wanted to show it here because if you have Luminar Neo in your toolkit, you'll want to understand how to use this tool. It is really, really powerful. So let's have a look. You'll find the light depth tool as the first one in the creative area. I said this replaces Relight AI. Let me just open this up here and you'll see you get a, uh, an amount slider. We have all of our masking, the standard things that you have with, uh, with all the tools in Luminar. But this interesting rendition of this photo, right? You can kind of make out. This is the, the foreground tufa that's here, and then there's this double-headed arrow that I cannot select right now because I haven't applied the effect. Softness, warmth, advanced, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, first thing is just add an amount. And so as you can see, I add this amount, you can see that the, the lighting is changing in the photo. Let me push this really far because this is where the action is, right? This is where you're controlling your depth mask. How you know narrow do you want the, uh, the depth and how, uh, it, what focal plane do you want affected in your photo? If you think of your photo from foreground to background and there are different like slices of depth, and that's what you control with this uh, with this ellipse here. Let me make this really, really tight, like very narrow. And you see as I move this now, I'm clicking and dragging as I move this up and down, you're gonna see this band of light kind of move through the scene from foreground at the bottom of this display to background. And as I do that, now I'm looking back at the light depth tool itself, I see different areas of the photo being affected right here, I have like my, my main subject tufa being affected, but if I push it out to say here, it's much more the water. All right, now let's do something a little more, a little more natural looking. I'm gonna spread this out so I have a nice fall off on the light. This is you know you're controlling your feather here. You can't control the sides, but you can control the feather. And for this photo, this is an interesting look with the, the water being illuminated, but I'm more interested in having my foreground illuminated. And then dial around maybe a little bit with the feather. I can play with the amount of how much I want for that. And then softness, how harsh do I want the transition between the light and the shadow? to the softness. And you see that the mask, this is effectively your depth mask, right? That's changing and it's getting softer. And I'll do that on this tapering off of the look. And just a few clicks here, before, after. Big difference, very big difference. But there are more controls as well. I mentioned, you know, I, I can't seem to grab like the sides and shrink the effect of this lighting. We've got masking we can do that with. And there's also these advanced controls where if something doesn't look quite right or you wanna tweak something, uh, you've got that uh, that option here as well. So uh, let's, let's dig into those two. So with this adjustment having been made, let me do a quick before and after before and after. You know, something that uh, I, I, I'm less keen on is I lost a little bit of the lighting on these uh, secondary tufa in the mid-ground. And uh, the foreground, I would normally do like another maybe burning here to uh, to darken that. Well, what do I have in the advanced settings? Oh, actually, I forgot to cover warmth. Um, yeah, obviously the, the the cast of the light. Do I want it to be cooler? Do I want it to be warmer? I, I like the uh, the nominal look for this particular photo. But in the advanced settings, uh, this is where you're controlling the near or far brightness. And so think of near as you know the lower part in this interface, your foreground, and the 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 far is your mid ground to background. Well, the brightness in the foreground, I can decrease that a little bit. And you see I'm getting that little extra darkening down at the bottom there. Um, I have control over the warmth as well. The brightness near, actually, I'm sorry, I adjusted the far there. Brightness near, if I push that up, I get more brightness. If I pull it down, I get less brightness. I want that a little bit darker in the foreground and maybe a little 
less dark, aka less negative going toward the right to brighten things up a little more in the background. And if that's still not enough, maybe I still want a little bit more brightness here, I have masking tools. And so with this, I can choose a brush, I can erase the look, and let's say maybe at you know, 42, that sounds fine, I can take away the lighting adjustment. Let's just say for, for illustrative purposes, these two groups of tufa there. And now I've recovered some of that, that little accent light it had before, before and after. So there's still, there's still secondary players in the photo. That's a lot of adjustment and a lot of change in the photo with just one particular uh, control here. So uh, a couple of other thoughts about light depth. Um, one is the softness slider. Use it. I, I think you, you want to use it to really have light fall off and taper off. At least as a landscape person, that's how light happens naturally. But also there is the danger of not enough softness. You could introduce halos, and I can show you that on this photo right here. Pay attention to the left side of this main tufa. If I take softness back down, notice that harsher halo, especially around the sky, right? If I bring that softness back up. I'm controlling for that. I'm having a more natural fall off of the light. You know, halos happen when we're doing post-processing and we push contrast between particularly hard edged objects. So watch out for that one uh, with softness. And the other thought is it will be interesting to see what Skylum does with depth masks in other tools. This controls light and warmth, being able to do things with a depth mask. Uh, for a photo like this, I could see myself also wanting to do a depth mask with, say, something like Structure AI, you know, something in the Essentials area where I've got structure, which is already pretty darn intelligent, but imagine having more structure on my foreground and a less structure in my midground, or maybe even something like down in the Pro area. We've got super contrast. You know, being able to do this level of contrast control coupled with a depth mask, we'll see. We'll see if Skylum is going to add that in. But if you're just looking for some some lighting changes, this uh, light depth tool, this you know this new uh, reimagining of Relight AI, it's really nice. I I do really uh, uh, like the way that Skylum has approached how they present it and how you control it. So one more time with that before and after. Let me switch over to my edits here, and before that light depth, after one change, one tool, one adjustment, did all of this before and after. Very nice improvement. You're a Luminar Neo user. You know, get the latest update. You've got this in your hands, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see if they bring depth masks to other tools in Luminar Neo. Hope you found the video useful. Got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.